we are rolling. This is Eric from the Analog Cafe, southernmost recording studio in the United States of America. I'm speaking to you on a Sennheiser 441, which you see on your screen, and it's been in continuous production for almost 40 years. I think you can also see that not only does it sound good, but it looks good too. The first thing we ask ourselves whenever we buy a piece of gear is whether we can make records like the records we hear on the radio. The ASP 4816 shares its electronics with its uh, big brother, big sister, the Audi 8024, used by people like Pete Townsend in England who also uses the IS Radar Recorder, one of our favorites. I understand there are Grammy award-winning records that uh, have been made with this console. Not with this particular console, but with the ASB 8024. And don't forget Full Sail University, I believe there's some video on that one. The board is clean in a Jim Williams kind of way. Jim preaches a very clean signal chain, and uh, we like that idea. Check out Jim at audioupgrades.com. Highly recommended. He does a lot of work with us, and we're really happy. So we take our clean signal chain, and we use our outboard equipment, like our Eventide Eclipse, our Eventide H3000, and our Eventide remake of the 2016. But right now, we're going to focus on the quirks, the idiosyncrasies, the things we like about the Audion ASP 4816, our mix console here at the Analog Cafe. of the console strip it's all pretty standard other than the fact that you have two channels coming in to the same fader strip and what that means is this is an inline console and I would suggest that you look at Wikipedia and find the definition of inline it's very functional it works great and the biggest thing is from a workflow point of view it allows me to put a lot of information a lot of sound within reach and that is very important So 16 console strips, 32 tracks returning, and 16 preamps, one for each of the buses, as in 4816. In just a second, we'll tell you where the other 16 inputs come from to get to 48 inputs for the ASP 4816. Next on your screen, you're going to see the bus assignment buttons. You've got eight of them, but you can shift them down below. You can assign them to the long or short fader, as you can virtually every function in the console to assign it to either the long fader or the short fader. An interesting feature is being able to assign to multiple buses and pan throughout them by pressing the pan button, which is between the fader assignment and the bus assignment. Next, we have the eight aux sends for stereo aux sends, last two assigned as cues, which also route to headphone uh, specific uh, mixes. Then we move on to our filters very fundamental, very simple filters, 10K, 18K on the high end, and 50 and 100 on the low end. You can assign those again to either the long or the short fader, not both. And like most good faders, a little bit goes a long way. They're very sensitive, they're very musical, as they say. Next is the EQ, fairly simple. You have a high area, a low area, and uh, very basic stuff. Nice cue adjustment and sounds real good and again a little bit goes a long way which is the sign of a good piece of gear. Now you see the faders. The short faders up above, long faders at the bottom. Short faders by default are attached to your preamps, low faders are attached to your DAW return and they are the longer 
for faders. Doesn't really make much difference to me. We keep everything in unity. I call it the unity principle. I think I learned this in the early 70s, but since I haven't found it anywhere on the internet, I think I'll call it my unity principle. Now we've got eight more of the inputs I promised, eight of the 16 that we're looking for. This gets us up to 40 along with the 32 inputs from the 16 console strips. These are four stereo returns, which can also be used with a fullback system to facilitate the uh, mix you give to a vocalist or to someone doing an overdub. Now you have your bus trims, which are kind of the Audient ASP4816 pads, which affect how much sound is uh, traveling into your recording device. And then you've got your aux levels, uh, which match in color, if you notice, the two cues are blue, and your six green aux levels. So this section right here replaces a whole lot of outboard gear that we used to have, and we really like the idea of the feature of uh, having a mix bus compressor. It's actually a very good mix bus compressor based on the SSL BCA type design. Very famous. It goes way back. Studio, foldback, speaker, control, control room. Uh, this is uh, equipment that we had uh, a bunch of outboard to do when we had our Midas XL200 as our main board. So this is fantastic. And the subgroups, which you see down here, are also really a cannot do without feature for me. I learned to mix on subgroups. That's where I do my dynamics and move things around. And it's really a joy to have really old-fashioned subgrouping in uh, what I do.